Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah. It's been a while, huh? <laughs> Alright, let's begin. Today we're going to unbox and set up a few things. Namely, the SteelSeries QCK or Quick Edge XL Gaming Mousepad, Logitech G502 Proteus Spectrum and Corsair K70 RGB Mark II. You can find the links for the full specifications of the products in the description down below. Let's go! Yep, we're finally going to replace these things. Well, except the mouse. This keyboard came in with a mouse that is broken now and was replaced by this one. This was a keyboard and mouse bundle from CM Storm called CM Storm Octane. I think I bought it last 2017. Let's just put this thing here for now and uh, unbox our mouse pad. Here's the front of the box, some details about the mouse pad. The dimension is 900 by 300 millimeters or 35.43 by 11.81 inches. Thickness is 2 millimeters or 0.08 inch. It's made up of cloth for the surface and non-slip rubber base. Some more information in different languages. Here it is. Alright, let's clean up the desk a little bit and here we go. So clean, so good. Now then, let's move on to the Logitech G502 Proteo Spectrum mouse. Truth is, this was not supposed to be part of this video. It just so happened that I forgot that I bought it last 2017 and it's just chilling inside my closet. I actually opened this box when I received it to test it. Okay, here's some information at the back of the box. Let's open it up. Some warranty stuff and this thing. Here's the mouse. It has a 2.10 meters of braided cable. Up to 18 grams of optional weights. It has 5 pieces of weights weighing 3.6 grams each which you can arrange to balance your mouse the way you want to. A mixture of matte black and glossy accents with smooth and hard plastic for the body and textured rubber on the side for gripping. A profile indicator to know what profile you are using without checking it on the software. A PMW3366 sensor with 200 to 12,000 dpi. 3 onboard memory profiles. USB report rate of 1000 Hz or 1 millisecond, And a 32-bit ARM microprocessor and of course, RGB lighting. 11 programmable buttons with 20 million clicks for the left and right ones. And a dual mode hyper fast scroll wheel that has a free or fast scroll mode and a more precise scrolling mode which can be activated or deactivated by just clicking a button. And now, this. The Corsair K70 RGB Mark II Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I chose the Cherry MX Brown variant and I don't regret a thing. Here are some product details at the front of the box. Its frame is made up of aircraft grade anodized brushed aluminum. Just like my Corsair Obsidian 500 d RGB SE. Not that sure about the aircraft grade part on the case though. It has 8MB of onboard profile storage, so if you like to use your keyboard on LAN parties or on other computers, that could be useful. Gold contact Cherry MX mechanical switches for accuracy and reliability with light and tactile feedback and crips. Huh? What? And crisp sound on every key press. Some more information at the back. Okay, let's open it up. Here's the 2 meter long braided cable, some FPS and MOBA keycap replacement and keycap remover. It has two USB plugs for the keyboard and USB 2.0 pass through which I would undoubtedly use a lot on my MCUs. Some warranty and user manual stuff, and the textured rubber wrist rest. Now for some uninspiring sound tests. Here's the volume wheel with the mute button on the side of it. The dedicated media keys for stop, previews, pause, play, and next. Up on this side is the profile switcher, brightness level, and windows key lock buttons. Now let's equip the wrist rest. It weighs around 1.25 kilograms because of its beefy aluminum build. And lastly, here's the USB pass-through port. Now that we're done with unboxing, after connecting everything to our PC, Let's proceed on to the setup process. 
You can either customize your G502 profiles by downloading and installing the Logitech G-Hub software or you can just use the presets that are currently saved on your mouse. I mean, if you don't care about the RGB and macros and other stuff, you can change the DPI even without the software anyway. So yeah. But just for us to see what's included inside in the software, let's install it. Keep in mind that this is the first time that I'm going to see it as well, so I might not be able to do things correctly and I'm sorry in advance, okay? Right! So after downloading and installing, let's see what's inside. It seems like you can only use or assign macros on the dedicated macro keys or G keys on this software and you can also download user uploaded settings for your use. After the brief introduction, it detected my mouse right away. On the light sync tab, we can set the RGB effects, duration or speed, and brightness. Hmm, let's see. Screen sampler. I think we need to open a game for this. We basically just choose a location on the screen where the software will receive or take the current color of the pixel or group of pixels and then send that color to the peripherals. The audio visualizer effect I think is pretty self-explanatory. You just need to select a color and then set the intensity or threshold which the RGB lights would base their activation or effects. Or you can just click on pulse, so that the RGB on the mouse would only light up on every kick or bass of the music track. Cycle effect will cycle the colors of course. Moving on to the assignments tab, under commands, we can drag and drop a command onto a dedicated G key on our mouse. Like if we want to hide or show the desktop, we can just drag and drop the command to a G key. And then instead of clicking left windows key and the D key, we can just click on G7 for example. On the keys part, I'm not quite sure so I'm not gonna be touching this but according to the instruction, I think it's the same as the commands from before. Now on the actions one, I'm not quite sure, sorry. Huh? Macro for macros, of course. On the system, I think you can use the G keys to launch programs and other stuff. Like if you want to launch iTunes, just add that on the application and set a G key for it. G5 for example. And finally, on the sensitivity tab, we can set our DPI speeds and report rate. Let's check out the settings. Okay, looks good. And close. Now let's move on to IQ. I'm a little bit more familiar with this software because I've been tinkering with it since last July. There's our keyboard. Click on settings. Again, really self-explanatory. Okay, it looks like a firmware update is available. Let's try and update our board. And it got disconnected. It does that sometimes when I try to update it and it's really annoying to be honest. Let's close the program and open it again. There's the update again. Click on update and update failed. Close and open the software again. Click on update and failed again. Okay, let's try this one more time. Huh? 
Now, let's say you want to make a macro key for an editing software. You can do that by doing the following steps. First, create a profile for the said editing software, Adobe Audition for example. Now, let's say you want to click a single key to perform a task that uses two keys. The recording task for example. Adobe Audition requires clicking the left shift key and space bar to start recording. So, let's set the macro settings for that. Click on record macro and push the left shift key followed by the space bar just like how you would do it on Audition. After that, click on the record macro button again to save the action. Then, to set the key that will be responsible for the macro, just click a key that you like to use. The insert key for example. Now let's try it. Launch Adobe Audition. First, let's use the usual left shift key and space bar combo. There you go. Now the macro key. Yay, it worked! <laughs> After spending some time creating profiles, here are some of them. Spiral key. Wave ripple. See, it goes like that. Trippy, huh? Next is color shift key. Visor key. Sequential wave key. Type light, static blue, static turquoise, static orange or lava orange, I guess, it depends, static red, static hot pink, static white, the unfinished nova, orange blue ripple, white rain, Philippine flag, the LGBT flag, and my life, which has no color. <laughs> Here are some gaming profiles. Dota 2, Deus Ex, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Odyssey goes like this. And for the editing profiles, Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, Audition, Premiere Pro, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching and see you again next week, maybe.